Hi friends, I have a book today called Duck and Goose. And I just love this story. Duck and Goose are so, so cute. And you know, the cool thing about this book is it is written and illustrated by the same person. Yeah, so sometimes you can just be the writer and you can have somebody else work on your pictures and be their illustrator. But sometimes you might decide you wanna do both. You wanna be the writer and the illustrator. And in this story, Duck and Goose, written and illustrated by Tad Hills, Tad Hills decided to do both of those, be the writer and the illustrator. So if we look at this first picture here, we can see a beautiful setting. It's taking place in the outdoors, but if we look really, really carefully, you might see something in this page that's gonna come up later in the story. Okay, let's take a look. Duck and Goose, written and illustrated by Tad Hills. Oh my, what is that, Duck Quacked? Well, that's a silly question, Goose honked. It is a big egg, of course. Oh, of course it is an egg. I know that, Huff Duck. What I mean is, where did it come from? Goose looked skyward. He looked to the river. He looked to the fields. He thought very hard. Who are you? He finally asked. I, said Duck, puffing out his feathered chest, am the one whose egg this is. I saw it first. Well, Goose quickly raised one webbed foot. It's mine. I touched it first. <laughs> hey, you should never put your dirty foot on an egg, Duck scolded. Don't you know anything about caring for eggs? Yes, I do, Goose cried. Stop yelling, Duck yelled and then he whispered forcefully, don't you know that you and your screaming are very likely disturbing the baby bird who is trying to take a snooze right inside this egg? Goose wished that Duck wasn't right. He lowered his head and he whispered softly, I'm very sorry, go back to sleep in there. My, that's quite a beauty you have, called a bluebird from across the river. Thank you. It's mine, quacked Duck. Actually, it's mine, honked Goose. Thank you. So, asked Duck, what do we do now? We should do something, suggested Goose. Yes, you're right. Good thinking, agreed Duck. Like what? Duck and Goose each thought. Let's take a look at what they thought. Okay, so on this side, we have what Duck thought. So he thought he should build this fence around the egg and make some signs. And his signs say, this egg is private property. Duck's egg, no geese allowed. No honking, $5 fine. And on the other side is Goose. And he thought he should also make a fence around it and make some signs. Let's see what his signs say. If you are a duck, keep walking. No ducks beyond this point. Quiet, please. Absolutely no quacking in this area. Well, we must keep the egg warm until the fuzzy little occupant is ready to come out, said Goose. Oh, excellent idea, exclaimed Duck. He pushed past Goose. Step aside, I shall do just that. But Goose was quick too.
After a flurry of fussing, grunting and groaning, slipping and sliding, honking and quacking, I'm noticing this is not going well. Duck and Goose found themselves back to back. Scoot over. I don't have any room, complained Duck. You are much closer than me to, than me and than I am to you. Stop yelling in my ear, Goose. Shh, Goose hushed, pointing at the round thing beneath them. Yes, yes, yes. We must remember. Quiet, quiet, quiet. We mustn't disturb the little one. And so they sat very still and very quiet, waiting. For a long time, they waited. Do you guys recognize this picture from the front of the cover? They listened to the crickets chirp and the frogs burp. I am going to teach this baby bird to quack like a duck, duck boasted. Well, I am going to teach it to honk like a goose, goose honked back. I am going to teach this baby bird to waddle, goose added. Oh, so am I, said duck. They heard the pitter patter of the rain. I am going to teach this baby bird to swim, duck said. Me too, said goose. To pass time, they sniffed wildflowers in the warm sun and they shared breadcrumbs while Goose taught Duck to honk. They watched the sunset in the sky and Duck taught Goose to quack. They counted the stars in the night sky. Let's teach our baby to fly, said Goose. Oh, ooh, good idea, said Duck. I'm sure our baby will be a fast learner, said Duck. If it takes after you and me, I'm sure you're right, agreed Goose. Did you guys notice a change? Instead of wanting it to be just their very own, now they're working together and they're not arguing. They're working together to take care of this special baby. Together they waited until, huh, did you feel that? Duck nodded. Yes, I did. Did you feel that, Goose? Goose nodded. It's time, Goose. It's time, Duck squawked. I think they think it's time for the egg to hatch. Let's see what happens. Quickly, Duck slid down and started running in circles around their egg. What should we do? He hollered. I think we need to remain calm. Goose yelled back. Excuse me, a little voice called out. Duck stopped in all the excitement and confusion. He had failed to notice the bluebird kicking their egg. Can I play too? She asked. Play? This is no time for play, yelled Duck. This is no time for games, yelled Goose. And what's with the kicking? Well, I was only trying to get your attention, said the little bird. Well, you got it, Duck huffed. False alarm, Goose, go back to work. Well, can't you see that we are very busy here, Goose exclaimed to the baby bird. This is serious business. This is perhaps the most important moment of our lives. Oh my, I'm sorry, apologized the bluebird. I had no idea. I just thought that maybe I could play with your ball. It's really a nice one, she added. And then she flew away. Goose gulped. Did she say ball? He whispered to Duck. You know, I did have my doubts, Duck finally said. 
It's a bit squishier than most eggs I've seen. Yes, I must say I was somewhat suspicious of those big dots, Goose admitted. It may not be an egg, but it is lovely, said Duck. Oh, absolutely, Duck, Goose agreed. It's a keeper. As the crickets chirped, the frogs burped, and the grass swayed in the gentle breeze, Goose quacked and Duck honked, and the ball bounced, rolled, and sometimes even flew. See that? Now look at this picture that we saw at the beginning that we talked about was the setting of the story in the outdoors. But if you look really closely, you notice that that egg isn't there anymore. Hey, okay. how many of you spotted it at the very beginning? Let's see. Um, yes, look at this picture of the setting. Can you spot the egg? Now, friends, let's think, was it really an egg? No, it wasn't an egg. They argued and argued about whose egg it was. They argued and argued about what they were going to teach the little baby bird inside. But it turned out it wasn't an egg at all. It was a ball. And they also learned in this book, Duck and Goose, that when you work together as friends and you're kind and respectful towards each other, things always go a lot better. So when they were arguing at the beginning, nothing was going very well, right? They were arguing about everything. It's mine. No, I touched it. You're too close. Move away. But when they finally decided that they should work together to take care of it, things went a lot better. And in the end, they didn't have a baby to take care of, but what they did have was a new friend. So that's the story of Duck and Goose, and we hope that you liked it, and we'll be back with other stories. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great day.